Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at worked solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam which will be sat by students studying BTEC Level 3 Nationals in Engineering. Now the document that we're going to be referring to today are the sample assessment materials that are or have previously been provided on the Edexcel website and the document that we're going to be referring to in particular is Issue 1 of the sample assessment materials. Question 9 reads, when designing a bridge it's important that the supports on which loaded beams rest are capable of supporting the load safely. The diagram shows a simply supported beam in static equilibrium. And the question asks us to calculate the reaction forces at points A and D. Now one thing that's important to point out is that we have two conditions for static equilibrium. The first states that the sum of the moments in the clockwise direction equals the sum of the moments in the anti-clockwise direction. And the second condition for static equilibrium states that the sum of the forces pushing down equals the sum of the forces pushing up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take moments about point A, so we're going to take turning moments about this point here in order to determine our force at the point D, or the right hand support. And once we've got the force at the right hand support or point D, we're then going to use the second condition for static equilibrium. So the sum of the forces down equals the sum of the forces up in order to find our reaction at the left hand support. Now, whenever we have a beam with a UDL, the first thing we should always do is replace the UDL with a point load. So what we notice here, we have a UDL that has a weight of 35 newtons for every meter. Now if we look at this beam, we need the total length. So the length of this beam is 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6, plus 1, which is 7. So we have a beam that's 7 meters long. Therefore the weight is going to be 35 times 7. And the reason for that is because each meter of this beam weighs 35 newtons, but we've got 7 meters. Therefore, the weight 35 times 7 equals 245 newtons. So at the center of the beam, I need to add the weight of 245 newtons. So the weight of 245 newtons is going to act in the center of the beam at a distance of three and a half meters from the left hand support because the beam's seven meters long. So here I'm going to add our weight. It acts downwards. It's 245 newtons and it's at a distance of 3.5 meters from our support. Now in doing that we no longer have to consider our UDL because we've already taken it into consideration. So let's look at our first condition for static equilibrium, which states that the sum of the moments in the clockwise direction equals the sum of the moments in the anti-clockwise direction. And I'm just going to rewrite that. So sum of the moments clockwise equals sum of the moments anti-clockwise. And I'm going to add something here. I'm going to write about A in brackets. And the reason I'm doing that is to remind myself that I'm taking moments about that left hand support. Now if we look at each of those forces, and if we imagine the beam pivoting at point A, we can see that the 45 newton force is causing the beam to turn clockwise, the 70 newton force is causing it to turn clockwise, the 20 newton force is causing it to turn clockwise, and so is the weight of 245 newtons. And in fact the only force that's trying to turn it anti-clockwise is our force at point D, the reaction force at point D. So sum of the clockwise moments, and a moment is a force times a distance. So we have 45 newtons, and the 45 newton force is 2 meters from the pivot. To that, we're going to add the 70 newton force, and the 70 newton force is 4 meters from the pivot. Just remember to take the distance back to the pivot each time. And then we have a 20 newton force. And that distance is 7 metres from the pivot. And not to forget the weight, 
which is 245 newtons at a distance of 3.5 meters from the pivot. Now all of that is going to equal our reaction at D, so R subscript D times its distance from the pivot. And we can see from the diagram there that that's six meters from the pivot. So six RD is the same as six times RD. So my next step is to simplify the left-hand side. And all I'm going to do is multiply that out. So 45 times two plus 70 times four plus 20 times seven plus 245 times 3.5 equals 1,367. 0.5 and that still equals 6rd because we haven't done anything to our right hand side. Well what we have here is a simple linear equation. If we want to get rd on its own all we need to do is divide each side by 6. So what we're going to end up with is that the reaction at d equals the 1367.5 over 6 which gives us 227 0.9, we'll just go to one decimal place, 227.9 newtons. Now we just need to take a little bit of care here because if we look what the final answer is asking for here, it's actually asking for RA. So we'll come back and we'll fill RA in in a moment. Now our second condition for static equilibrium states the following, and we'll move into the next bit of the working area. The second condition for static equilibrium states that the sum of the forces pushing downwards equals the sum of the forces pushing upwards. Now we're only dealing with forces here, not with turning moments. So if we refer back to our diagram, we can see that the following forces are acting downwards. We have 45 newtons acting downwards. We have 70 newtons acting downwards. We have 20 newtons acting downwards but we also have 245 newtons acting downwards. So let's add those. 45 acting down, plus 70 acting down, plus 20 acting down, plus 245 acting down. And that equals the forces pushing up. Well, let's just have a look here. We only have two forces pushing up. We have the force at support A, and we have the force at the right-hand side, or the force at support D. So RA plus RD. Now we already know what RD is. We've already calculated it. It's 227.9, so we might as well input that into our equation. Next, we should simplify our left-hand side by adding 45 plus 70 plus 20 plus 245. And that gives us a total of 380. So 380 equals RA plus 227.9. Now our final step then, once again, we've got a simple linear equation. All we need to do to get RA on its own is subtract 227.9 from each side. And we'll be left with RA equals 152.1. Now I'm fairly confident that if you left the question there you would get all of the marks, but we'll just infill our reaction at A and our reaction at B for completeness. Let's switch colours. And here I'm just going to write RA equals 152.1 newtons and RD equals 227.9 newtons.